Hello and welcome to this webcast about probabilistic logic programming with beta distributed random variables. I'm Federico Ceruti from Cardiff University and this is joint work with Lance Kaplan at Army Research Laboratory in the US, Angaika Kimming at Cardiff and Murat Senzo in, in Turkey. Let's me start putting in context our work. We are living in a, no in a world full of objects and those objects might have relations between them. So we want to be able to express statements like there is a relation between smoking and asthma. And uh, there are many approaches for doing that. Logic programming is one of them. At the same time, some of the attributes and relations in the real world are probabilistic. And at an intersection between these two areas of research, there is, for instance, probabilistic logic programming approaches. However, just having probabilities might not be enough. Uh, sometimes we need to be able to reason about the confidence we have in those probabilities. So let's suppose we are tossing a coin three times, we obtain two heads and one tail, can we conclude whether the coin is fair or not? Probably not. Uh, but if we toss the same coin 3000 times and we obtain 2000 heads and 1000 tails, then we can have a quite a strong argument against the fact that uh, the, the, the coin is not fair. So our proposal lies at the intersection of these three areas of research and to illustrate why this is particularly important, we consider probabilistic logic programming. So this is a very simple logic program that says it's a, whoever smokes might have asthma with probability 06 and Bill smokes. From this one, we can derive the probability of a query. A query can be whether Bill has asthma or not. And the probability of this query is going to be the sum of the probability of this query to be true in all the possible world. So from this one, we can conclude that Bill suffers from asthma with probability 06 if he smokes. However, where did this number come from? Now, this number can come from data. So we might have a history of patients uh, who smoke and uh, some of them have asthma. But uh, what we really want to um, address here is to identify the value of pi, that is the true but unknown probability of asthma condition by sm smoking. So in order to do that, we need to start from the data and we can consider why the number of occurrence of asthma over n patients uh, when the patient smokes. And in this case, we have y equal to six. And from the bias theorem, we can now estimate the posterior distribution of pi given y, uh, provided that we can give a prior uh, information there. Now, because this pi is going to be distributed um, uh, as a binomial, and because we know that the conjugate of a binomial is a beta distribution, we can choose a beta distribution as a prior, and we know that uh, um, the posterior will also be a beta distribution. In particular, if you are choosing a beta distribution with parameters a and b as prior, then the posterior we know is going to be a beta distribution with parameters y plus a and n minus y plus b. Often, we try to not bias too much our assessment. We are using a uniform prior uh, in which a and b are equal to 1. And in that case, we know that uh, the, the, the posterior would just be beta uh, with parameter y plus 1 and n minus y plus 1. So in this case, we have 6, um, six for the value of y and n is equal to 10. Therefore, we have that the posterior would be a beta distribution with parameters 7 and 5. Now, a beta distribution with parameters 7 and 5 as this uh, distribution where the expected value is very close to 0, 0,6 and the variance is 10 to the power of minus 2. If we are increasing the number of samples we have of an order of magnitude, we can see that the expected value stays more or less the same, but the variance of this uh, distribution drops of an order of magnitude. And if once again we increase of another order of magnitude, the expected value doesn't change much, but the variance drops once again uh, an order of magnitude. Now, although these three, um, these three um, distributions have the same expected value, so in a sense they have the same probability from a frequentist point of view, they represent remarkably different random variables. So our proposal is to extend probabilistic logic programming to manipulate beta distributed random variables rather than probabilities. 
the main advantage is that uh, we can enable reasoning about uh, both about the probabilities of things and the uncertainty associated with our inferences. In terms of the actual technical contribution, we derive additional multiplication operators of the beta distributions returning a beta distribution by a moment matching, and we use this one as part of the algebraic problog a problog proposal. Um, we extend the a problog to include a conditioning operator necessary for a variety of probabilistic reasoning. And we then derive a conditioning operator over beta distributions returning a beta distribution by a moment matching. Now, a problog is a generalization of the probabilistic logic program in problog. So if you remember, this was the, um, the formula we used to compute the probability of a query. It is the sum over um, the, the, the possible words where this query is going to be true. Um, but this can be equivalent with written with generic um, sum and multiplication operators, um, provided that uh, these two operators are part of a commutative semi-ring. Okay? So what we derived in uh, this work is uh, a set of uh, well, a multiplication and an addition operator um, that uh, can operate on beta distributed random variables such that the, the, the resulting um, value is also a beta distributed variable. So in particular, the sum has is such that the expected value of the resulting um, um, operator that the, the variable resulting from the operation is equivalent to the sum of the expected value and the variance is the sum of the expected variance or the variance and uh, the product is very similarly the expected value of the product is the product of the expected values and the variance just is the variance of the product essentially now we often need a conditioning operator in reasoning about uh, uncertainty. So in a sense, we want to express uh, the probability or the beta distributions of a query given a set of evidence. And uh, this is generally be done in the way that uh, we, we are assessing what is the probability or, or the distribution of Q and the set of evidence. And then we divide or we condition over uh, all the possible set of evidence. So the last step in our proposal is to derive a conditioning operator for beta variables. So in do so, uh, we are expressing the fact that uh, this denominator, this uh, conditioning operator uh, over the set of evidence, this set of evidence can be seen as uh, Q and the set of evidence and uh, uh, Q plus not Q and the set of evidence while the numerator or the our X is Q and um, the set of evidence. So in following using these, uh, this real writing, we can derive a condition operator where the expected value is the division across the expected values, but then the variance start taking consideration more what are the conditional dependencies between the numerator and the denominator, um, because we know that there are relationships upon them. So the summary of our main contribution is a new a problem parameterization with our uh, three new operators, as operator for sum, multiplication, and conditioning division uh, over uh, beta distributions, such that each operator returns a new beta distributed random variable uh, via moment matching. We then experimentally validated our proposal, and uh, the first experiment uh, showed that uh, our Proposal outperforms state-of-the-art approaches on probabilistic logic program benchmarks. And um, so we started considering some benchmarks like uh, this one, where this is the traditional uh, smoke and friends um, uh, problem in, in a logic program, where we know that uh, a person has a certain probability of being stressed, a person X and Y might be influencing one each other with a certain probability. Uh, if somebody is stressed, by definition, is going to smoke. And if X and Y are friends and uh, Y influences X and Y smokes, then X would also smokes. And then we have our uh, smoke implies asthma with a certain probability. We have four people, some of them are friends, and we have some evidence that some of them are smoking, some of them are influencing each other, and we want to know what is the probability that uh, any of them uh, is going to smoke. Now, what we did is those probabilities here, although in, 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 um, they can be fixed, what uh, we did is for each of them, we run, choose 100 um, um, probabilities between 0 and 1 clearly um, over a uniform distribution. So for instance, we just 
for one of them might be p1 equal to 0 3 and uh, for each assignment of these uh, uh, probabilities we generate 10 beta distributions using n equal to 10 samples of p1 uh, then uh, using 50 samples and then um, 100 samples so overall we have 1000 uh, random um, uh, instantiation of beta distributions uh, to consider in, in our experimentation 100 and then 10 for each of them now to compare our approach we consider uh, the a, a leading uh, proposal for manipulating beta distributed random variable uh, that is the subjective logic uh, proposal where specific logic opinion is essentially an alternative way to see a beta distribution and um, um, we therefore just created an a probable parameterization that uses uh, uh, standard subject logic operators for addition multiplication and division uh, just taken from the literature uh, more details are in the paper the result of the RMSC shows that uh, our uh, proposal significantly outperform uh, the use of standard subject logic operators and that is independent on the number of the samples we are using but uh, also um, our proposal is much better at uh, assessing its own uncertainty so in this graph we are mapping the desired conference or our confidence over uh, the actual confidence so the best will be the diagonal and uh, while our proposals slightly uh, underestimate um, its own its own results so if uh, our proposal is going to show that uh, uh, it thinks that uh, the, there is higher uncertainty than what is actually is in the reality um, the subjective logic operator uh, instead are always much more confident on what uh, on what they are uh, they are uh, producing and uh, increasing the number of samples then these uh, this become even more um, marked then the second experiment shows that uh, our proposal is as good as the state of the art of approaches in Bayesian network benchmarks so in other terms, we start from some uh, benchmarks of Bayesian networks that are presented in literature. So these three uh, network structures, and we transform each of them into a logic program. So these we have that A uh, and B, A is the father of B. Then we have we start from A, that is, it has a specific probability here, and then B given A, and B given not A, and that is um, with a certain probability. And those probabilities are exactly the probability that uh, you want to add in the, your Bayesian network. We compare our proposal against state-of-the-art approaches, and uh, there are three main approaches for dealing with uncertain probabilities in Bayesian networks. Subjective Bayesian networks, that is um, the leading proposal nowadays that is being proposed this year, where Bayesian networks um, um, have conditions that are subjective opinions instead of dogmatic probabilities and then it builds on top of Bill's peers uh, message passing inference method belief networks that are in the following is going to be seen as gbt uses them such as a theory and then photo propagation and backward propagation are enabled via the generalized Bayes theorem and then cradle network cradle uh, that represent a single probability values with closed intervals representing the that replace single probability values with closed interval representing possible ranges of probability values and then once again it extends per message passing inference methods so once again uh, the table of the rmsc shows that uh, our proposal is as good as subjective by asian network apart from uh, a few cases um and uh, uh, it is always either the best or very close to the best so in this case the difference is uh, a zero 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 two uh, or, or instead of this is the best okay um, and uh, regarding the, uh, the the graph between uh, desired confidence and actual confidence uh, these very close to the diagonal we have the subjective Bayesian network uh, but our proposal in blue is the closest to the diagonal among all the other proposals so we can actually see that uh, uh, this is pretty good result and this is particularly good result when the number of samples so when the uncertainty is much high when the number of samples is very low so the, the the uncertainty is very high which is clearly the the more the more interesting part for for using this type of approaches 
So to conclude, uh, let me reiterate where, where this proposal lies. We have reasoning about objects, attributes, and relations in, in, in the world. And for instance, we can use logic programming. Uh, to do that in, in the case of uncertainty, uh, we might want to use probabilistic reasoning. And uh, probabilities alone do not tell us all the story. We want also to say how confident we are in those probabilities. And that's we need to be here at the intersection between these three worlds. And what we did is essentially to enable the a problem approach to probabilistic logic programming to reason in presence of uncertain probabilities represent a beta distributed random variables. Our proposed operators outperform existing proposal for uncertain probabilities, and the proposed operators are good as the state-of-the-art approaches for uncertain probabilities in Bayesian networks while being able to handle much more complex problems. Regarding future work, we want to provide additional characterization on the variance in the conditioning operator, but also test the boundaries of our approximations to provide practitioners with pragmatic assessment and assurance. And finally, we want to work in the direction to introduce an expectation maximization algorithm for parameter learning. Thank you very much for your attention.